Welcome to the latest Wednesday webinar. This month we're going to look at the issue of mirror journals, something you might have come across if you're involved in open access and reading up around Plan F. But what on earth are they? We're going to cover that topic and more in this session by looking at the what and why of mirror journals. Why do they exist and why do they exist now? The different ways they could help the move towards wider adoption of open access, potential problems they can cause. We'll conclude with looking at some of the next steps you can take when supporting researchers with decisions about mirror journals. So we'll start with the obvious question, what are they? Mirror journals are new open access titles which are being created as a mirror image of existing established journal titles. They're published by the same publisher, have the same editorial board and selection criteria, and they publish the same type of research. The crucial difference is their business model. Mirror journals are fully open access in contrast to the original journal, which operates under a traditional subscription model. You can spot a mirror journal as it's a different title with a separate ISSN, International Standard Serial Number, and it usually has an X at the end of the title, so like the Journal of Water Research X or World Neurosurgery X. The whole process of mirror journals is something which is being pioneered by the publisher Elsevier as a way to offer researchers more choice when publishing their work and other publishers have started to pick up on the model as a potential way forward. In theory, this is going to help to address some of the concerns that researchers, publishers and librarians have had about the open access publishing model. Under this model, a publisher offers a journal via subscription whilst also making selected articles openly available if the authors pay an article processing charge something which can run into many thousands of pounds or dollars. This leads to accusations that publishers are exploiting the open access model and charging libraries and other institutions twice, once for the subscription and again for any open access payments. When it was introduced, the hybrid model was designed as a way to sort of speed up the transition to open access whilst appeasing both the publishers and the researchers. But for reasons we'll get into, this hasn't necessarily been the case. The publishers of these journals claim that mirror titles will help the move towards the wider adoption of open access as over time more and more content will be made openly available. At this point the two titles can merge back into one and become one completely open access journal. That all sounds great but how does it work in practice? So if you imagine that the Journal of Research is an established journal in its field and it's popular with researchers who are looking to publish. It currently operates under a hybrid model by charging a subscription and APCs to make articles openly available at the time of publication. They want to encourage the move towards open access and avoid accusations of double dipping, so they set up the Journal of Research X, which publishes only open access content, born open access content. It has the same editorial board, the same mission statement, the same peer review process, and the same criteria for selection. At this point, the original journal of research reverts back to being a subscription-only journal. For the researcher, this process should in theory be quite seamless. They might not even realise that it's going on. The researcher is going to submit their paper to the editor as they usually would, and it's sent out for review. So it's the same editor and the same reviewers for both titles, working to the same standards. If the paper is accepted, then the researcher has to make the choice about whether to publish in the Journal of Research and have the article paywalled, or pay the fee and publish open access in the Journal of Research X the mirror title. Of course, due to funder mandates, the choice might actually be out of their hands, but the important thing to stress is that the decision isn't made by the publisher at this point, it's made by the researcher, by the author. So now we have a better idea of what mirror journals actually are, why do we need them? One of the main reasons involves Plan S, the set of principles released in late 2018, outlining how research outputs can be shared openly into the future. I'm going to briefly recap Plan S so we're all on the same page as we go. Plan S states that by 2020, scientific publications that result from research funded by public grants provided by um, subscribing funders 
must be published in compliant open access journals or on compliant open access platforms. Except we've already had one change in that they've announced uh, a year's extension to this deadline, so it's now 2021. There are 10 key principles in Plan S, but the important one to concentrate on for this webinar is that the hybrid open access publishing model has been specifically declared as non-compliant with the uh, Plan S principles. This is a major problem for some researchers, as they think it means they will have less choice about where to publish, as the titles they would normally publish in are no longer compliant with funder mandates being hybrid publications. So why are hybrid journals such a problem for everybody? Well, if you look at some of the facts and figures on the screen, that might help to explain things. Hybrid journals are those journals which operate a traditional subscription model, but offer, offer authors the chance to pay a fee to make selected articles available open access at the point of publication. They're meant to be a temporary measure in order to encourage the sort of flip to OA, a kind of a holding pattern while we've got everything sorted out. But I think we can all agree this hasn't happened exactly as it was planned to. Publishers have been accused of using it basically as an excuse to get more money from institutions by essentially having them pay the same um, fee twice to access content, which is known as double dipping. Instead of declining as open access has become a more popular route to publication, the number of hybrid journals is actually increasing. Unfortunately, most of the content within these journals is not actually published openly. Current figures show that under Plan S mandates, 85% of the journals currently published would be off limits to researchers who are looking to share their work. It's hoped that mirror journals will help to kind of reverse this trend and fix it, make more titles accessible to researchers whilst increasing the general uptake of open access. Those in favour of mirror journals claim that not only do they help promote open access, but they work towards solving many of the problems with the current scholarly publication system. One of these problems is connected to issues around prestige and academic freedom. When Plan S was first announced, a lot of the backlash focused on researchers who were worried that this would mean that suddenly the journals they wanted to publish in would be completely off limits to them. So rightly or wrongly, a lot of the reward system in academia is tied to the prestige of the journal title that researchers publish in. They're under pressure to publish in certain titles, which are widely read, which will in theory get them a lot of citations and recognition for their work. Even if they're not aiming for these huge numbers, within each discipline, there are certain journals which researchers are expected to share their work in as part of that community. When Plan S mandated that hybrid journals weren't compatible, suddenly people thought that a lot of these titles became inaccessible and they were worried about the impact this might have on their career. If a researcher was funded by a Plan S funder, they might not be able to publish their work where they needed to, where they were expected to as a part of their discipline but they might instead have to rely on some smaller, more niche titles, which might not do anything for their career in the long run. Mirror journals are offered as one potential solution to this problem, as they essentially replicate the original journal title that the researcher needs or wants to publish in. They have the same scope, same editorial board and standards for acceptance, so from a prestige point of view, they're basically the same thing. Publishers claim that this offers authors a gold route to open access while still allowing them to publish in their community favoured journal titles. From a publisher's point of view, setting up a mirror journal helps to keep their overall cost down, which means they don't have additional costs to suddenly pass on to the researcher. Setting up a new title has lots of costs associated with it for the publisher, so they have to find and recruit an editorial board, set up new publishing procedures and do marketing to make sure that people know the titles out there. It also incurs a cost in terms of time, so especially in the time it takes to build up a reputation for that journal title. With mirror journals, they're essentially keeping everything the same. They just have to set up a new title with an X at the end and have some type of mechanism for accepting open access payments, which is something most of them already have.
publishers also claim that there are cost benefits to institutions as they don't have to pay to subscribe to an openly available journal so there's no more double dipping. Most of these mirror journals are eligible for something that's known as a read and publish deal which aims to support open access while still giving publishers a sustained source of income. Under these deals, an institution pays a publisher an upfront fee to cover the open access costs of all the articles it's expected to publish in that title. And this is a calculation that's uh, made based on previous uh, figures of publication. Corresponding authors at that institution can then publish gold open access in this publication at no cost to them. And the institution also gets access to subscription content as part of that upfront payment. The idea is that over time, more and more institutions take part in these agreements, and the amount of openly available content will grow until everything is available openly. New mirror journals are eligible for these agreements, which publishers say will help the move towards open access. So that's a good point, but for balance we need to think about some of the criticisms of mirror journals. Ironically, most of them are a mirror of some of the proposed benefits that we've just discussed. So although mirror journals have in part been created to avoid any issues caused by Plan S and offer researchers the same level of choice over where to publish, it's also one of the major problems. The funders behind Plan, Plan S do not accept mirror journals and have explicitly stated that they consider them as hybrid publications and so they're not eligible under the Plan S principles. Of course, the guidelines around the implementation of Plan S are currently under review. Everything's in flux and it may change, but this is one aspect I think that's likely to stick, which does create something more of a problem than it claims to solve. So we can argue about how metrics should be used, but the fact remains that the current academic system rewards those who publish in journals and with publishers who have a high metric score. Mirror journals are designed to carry over some of this prestige to the new title in terms of the name and the reputation of the publication. But there's a bit of confusion about how this works in practice for the metrics of a title. So traditionally, metrics such as the journal impact factor can take time to build. And even newer metrics such as alt metrics are not always as instant as people would have you believe. Publishers of mirror titles have said that, at least initially, the two titles will have their own separate metric scores and these might merge in the future if the mirror and original title merge back into one. Whilst everything is still uncertain, this doesn't really help researchers who are under pressure to publish or perish in the most high impact titles, so this issue might cause problems going forward. One of the arguments for mirror journals is that they help to avoid the need for the creation of smaller niche publications, which will struggle to attract an audience. But mirror journals are still new titles, and there's a risk that the market will start to get crowded. It's not overly likely to happen, but imagine that every hybrid journal title suddenly spawns a mirror journal. Think about how many you would have. Even if only a third of titles did this, you're still looking at hundreds of potential new journals on the market. The market's going to get really busy really quickly and there is a slight concern that there might not be enough high quality research to go around. Are these titles going to struggle for content or are they going to be completely overwhelmed with content? Will this lead to titles having to accept anything to fill their pages? And what does this mean about the quality of academic research being produced and published into the future? This kind of leads on to the final problem with mirror journals, the ever-growing issue of predatory publishers. So I know the term predatory publisher is a little bit contentious, but what we mean by this are publishers who exploit the lack of understanding about open access in order to encourage researchers to publish their work in substandard titles in exchange for a fee. They charge this in quotes open access payment, but then they don't provide services like peer review or editing, meaning that Anyone can pay to publish anything and claim it's sound academic research, which is something obviously very dangerous for research integrity. No one is suggesting for one minute that mirror journals are in any way predatory publications, but there is a danger that they might be mistaken for them. 
One tactic employed by predatory publishers in the past has been to clone the titles of legitimate publications in order to attract researchers. And that's kind of similar to what mirror journals are actually doing. If researchers, and it's a big if, have listened to the messages we've been giving them about open access and predatory publishers over the last few years, they're going to be understandably confused that we now suddenly seem to be switching our advice and saying, yeah, this, this title seems very similar to that one. In this circumstance, it's predatory, but in this circumstance, it's perfectly fine. So there is a confusion that might occur there. The other possibility, of course, is that predatory publishers will move on from exploiting a lack of understanding of what open access is to exploiting um, a lack of understanding about what mirror journals are. I think over time, the message about open access publication and practices has actually gotten through and the research community are quite up to date with what's happening and titles which have made their money conning researchers into publishing under false pretenses with open access are starting to look for new targets to make cash essentially and they might use the confusion about what mirror journals actually are to their advantage for this reason, I think it's really important that we talk to our researchers about what mirror journals actually are and why they've been created. So that's a very brief outline of the potential advantages and the potential pitfalls of mirror journals. And I hope that helps you to sort of make up your own mind about whether you think they're positive or negative way forward to open access. I want to conclude with some tips on what you can do as library staff to help your research community understand mirror journals so you can at least avoid the problems we've seen with predatory publishers. I think it's important to explain that for all their problems mirror journals are legitimate. They've been published by the same publishers as original titles that researchers will be familiar with, have the same editorial board and crucially the same standards when it comes to things like peer review. It's not substandard work that is being published in these titles. They will incur a fee if the researcher publishes with them, but they will be getting what they pay for in contrast to the predatory publishers who will just take the money and run. Researchers also need to understand that currently under Plan S proposals, publishing in mirror journals would not be compliant if that's the way the funder chooses to go. Everything is in a, a state of flux with this and time will tell what happens with the implementation of Plan S and at the moment things are still developing. However, the team behind the plan do seem pretty set on the goal of avoiding hybrid and pretty clear on their opinion that mirror journals are just hybrid in disguise. So, are mirror journals just a wolf in sheep's clothing or are they the future of open access publishing? Time will tell and we'll need to watch uh, developments on mirror journals closely. But that's a thought I will leave you with. Thanks for watching.